How often have we all heard stories that storms are going to become more frequent and much more severe? It's in the media all the time. Global warming is causing increasing greenhouse gases and they in turn are causing storms to become more severe and more frequent. It's like something like uh, Hurricane Sandy is going to happen more frequently. Remember Cyclone Sandy. The pressure system was so low that the sea rose four metres and the water poured into the subways of New York. That was in 2012. And then, say, in 1988 in Bangladesh, the storm was so large that uh, it covered 82,000 square kilometres, affected 20 million people. And then uh, the BBC, only the other day, uh, showing lightning storm in Scotland, uh, floods in China, fires in California, bang, 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 as if things are getting worse and worse and worse. What if we go to the past? The stories of these past storms are awe-inspiring. In 1370, uh, I think it was, there was a great drowning, or 1362, a, a great drowning in Denmark. That's what it's called. The pressure system was so low, the sea went inland 15 kilometres. 67 villages were wiped out. Some islands on the coast disappeared. 25,000 people dead. In 1570, there was the All Saints storm uh, on the 1st of November. Over 100,000 people dead uh, in uh, Holland, Belgium, Northern France. In 1703, there was a storm. They actually call it the Great Storm of 1703. The winds were so violent in the English Channel that they wet up the Thames, ripped ships off their moorings, and over 700 ships were driven westward up the Thames, crashing into each other until in the Western Thames there was a huge pile of broken wood. Over 6,000 chimneys in London were just blown off. If we go to China, the Government gazettes record typhoons. One of the best records in the world, uh, one of them goes from 975 AD and goes for a thousand years. It lists 570 typhoons. The worst were in 1660 and 1850. Now, the interesting thing about these old storms uh, they weren't so much in the medieval warm period, but they were in the colder area period, like the, the Little Ice Age. Even the 19th century was still cold before we're, we're warming in the 20th century. It looks as if in, that, in those colder periods, more polar air creeps into the middle latitudes. Anyhow, what are scientists saying today? Well, if we take a, a scientist like James Hansen, uh, the principal climate scientist for NASA for many years. He says because the world is warming, storms are going to get worse. In his book, uh, this is what he says. Because a warmer atmosphere holds more water vapour, global warming must increase the intensity of the uh, water cycle, meaning heavier rain, more extreme floods, more intense storms driven by latent heat, including thunderstorms, tornadoes and tropical storms. We had a scientist in Australia uh, who said that uh, if sea level rose 20%, storms would become you know, 10 times more frequent. If sea level rose 50 centimetres, storms would be 100 times more frequent. Well, luckily, we can go to data. A lot of countries have very good climatic records, most now for 100 years, some longer. The National Oceanographic and Atmospheric uh, Administration of the United States have got records of hurricanes hitting the eastern seaboard of the United States since 1850. 
during that time, greenhouse gases have gone up and carbon dioxide 40%. Now that graph shows no increasing frequency, just ups and downs. There's no trend of CO2 going up and hurricanes going up. Not at all. Also in the United States, uh, again, uh, this data is from, from NOAA, tornadoes in the, in the plains uh, of the United States. The worst year seemed to be uh, 1974. If we go to Australia, we have cyclones, we call them cyclones and hurricanes, and if they hit the eastern seaboard of Australia, then they run down that eastern seaboard. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia have produced graphs showing really there's been no increasing frequency of anything. Maybe they've, it's maybe dropped a little bit, but certainly uh, no trend with increasing carbon dioxide levels because in that graph from uh, 1970 uh, to the present, uh, carbon dioxide levels have gone up 20%. And uh, in 2015, the Prime Minister's Award for Science in Australia went to a scientist, Professor Farquhar, who showed that winds had been dropping in velocity in the last uh, 30 years. Hardly consistent with models saying things are going to get more severe. One of the interesting graphs, though, is a graph of wind intensity in the tropics, the Northern Hemisphere tropics, the Southern Hemisphere tropics, Again, this comes from the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration of the United States. But it's wind intensity all around the world every six hours in the tropics. There is no trend. No trend at all. But if you lived at one of those peaks, you could say things got worse for, six, say, six years, but then they go down. But during that period in that graph, I think CO2 went up about 25%. Now, we should also be asking another question. Are we really mixing up population trends with frequency and intensity trends? For example, Florida in 1900 had a population of half a million. In 1960, 5 million. Today, 23 million. So obviously, when a hurricane hits Florida, there is now a lot more damage a lot more loss of life. In Australia, the worst cyclones trend down the coast and come to a, an area that's called the Gold Coast. 1945, the population in that strip of about 100k, 45,000. Today, 560,000. So things are getting worse in terms of damage and loss of life, but it's got nothing to do with the severity and the frequency of these storms, as you can see from all the graphs. The interesting thing is the scientists aren't asking a question, look, carbon dioxide has risen 40% since 1850. Surely we should be now seeing some increasing frequency of storms and severity if greenhouse gases are related to that. But that's not true, that's not happening. The data doesn't show that. It would seem that the climate models that scientists are using are really running on steroids. Are they so enthusiastic about their models? Are they, they so believe that the trends in the model that they're making arguments that they shouldn't be? They're using the wrong argument. Often enthusiasts would use any argument to prove their cause. But certainly this frequency and severity argument, it's, a, it's not an argument at all. It's, it's actually going nowhere. So the next time that some politician gets up and says the storms are getting worse and more frequent, just realise it's not his fault. He's hearing scientists say this all the time. And the argument that he's spruiking in the media and that the scientists are also spruiking, that argument is going absolutely nowhere. 